first of all I burned this new candle today it started tunneling already I can't like really show you but it started tunneling even though I had never burned it before so I'm really confused but it's a really nice smelling candle it's apples maple bourbon and harvest I don't know what harvest smells like but I'm like thinking pumpkins gourds the sweat of farmers possibly that's a scent note that could exist I'm reading blue lily lily blue finally I think it's been it's been a year since I read no it's been two years <laughs> since I read The Dream Thieves. Oh my goodness. It's been two years since I read Dream Thieves. It's not that I don't like the series. I really enjoy this series when I read it. I just find it takes a lot of mental energy to read these books for some reason. I think Maggie Stiefvater's writing is a little hard for me to get through. It's really good, but it's kind of challenging. I can like see people walking by. I'm on like the second floor of a house. So I can see, I don't know. I like looking at people's cute outfits that are outside. I am three chapters in. And of course I love it. It's already super interesting. I feel like it's weird because I, I keep expecting it to be more magical than it is. Like whenever I go into these books, I always expect more to happen in them, I guess. Or more with the central plot of them looking for Glendower. If you don't know what these books are about, because I feel like if you're like newer to the bookish community, you might not know. Because I feel like these have sort of, like they had their day, they had their time, because I don't know when this was published. 2014. So the first one was probably published around 2011 or 12. These had a time period where they were really popular. And I think they still are. I'm not saying they're not hyped and not popular, but I don't think people talk about them as much as when I first started on booktube. It follows our four main characters. One of them maybe isn't alive. One of them maybe will not be alive. And the other two are, are there three? Is there five? That's five. I said four, I meant five. My favorite character, I don't have a favorite character right now. It was Ronan in the last book, but I don't know what it will be. This will have spoilers because that's just how my brain works. But I don't think they'll be like, I like spoilers, you know, like if I'm not reading a book like super soon, I like spoilers. Like unless I'm reading the book in the next month or something or like it's specifically a book series that I'm like worried that I'll remember the spoilers for, I enjoy spoilers. This is a signed edition, don't mind my chip nail polish, and it's from a really cute bookstore in Nashville. That I went to. I, I'm really liking the writing. I mean, I always like the writing style. This book seems to be a bit more magical already than the other two. I'm glad they're in Cabe's Water more, and I'm just excited to see what happens. I really liked the first cave scene. It's It feels more spooky than the last two, so it's feeling a bit more autumnal. We got a scene with Persephone right off the bat, who I really like aesthetically. I hope we get more of her. They're going to pick up Mallory, Dr. Mallory, from the airport. So that's what they're doing. But yeah, there's dream stuff. There's psychic stuff. There's three magical women stuff. I do really like that dynamic between Mora, what are their names? Mora Kala, Kala? Why am I thinking Kala? Mora, Persephone, and Kala, it is Kala. Oh, look at me. Mora, Kala, and Persephone. They're really cool, I love them. I want to be them when I grow up. And today I'm planning on reading up to chapter 
15, so finishing chapter 15, so page 132 I want to get to. So that's my plan for the day. I've been to two classes, I'm going to go study with my cousin this afternoon. And that's the plan. There you go. Yes, I am filming in a bathroom, hence whatever this is. I am back home, hence also, apparently that's my favorite word today, the location change. I got to chapter 13 last night, or in the middle of the night, because I ended up falling asleep on the couch, and then my dad came downstairs because he wakes up at like 4 or 5 a.m. every morning for some reason and he turned the light on because he didn't know I was there so then I woke up but then I couldn't fall back asleep and up in my room so I read and then I fell asleep again and ended up waking up at about 10.40 which was not the plan. I had a plan to get up and start doing work because I have an assignment that I haven't started and it's due tonight but it's a small assignment so I should be able to get it done but I also would like to get to page 206 which is chapter 27 so I want to read like this much more. Green Mantle is our villain. I find I mean each book seems to have a villain that it focuses on while there's this overarching plot, overarching plot of looking for Glendower and I think that's an interesting sort of style to do I'm not sure, I don't know, we'll see. They're each really interesting because they're just like, it's not like it's a magical enemy, it's like a a person that they're fighting against or dealing with. And I guess there was some variation because the gray man became like a good person. Good person is debatable, but someone that is friends with the main characters but green mantle is here they did like a reveal they were like green mantle they asked because he's the latin teacher right so they asked what's your name in latin and he was like green colin green mantle and i didn't get that reveal at all because i forgot that that's like was the gray man the boss from the second book so i totally didn't pick up on that but i am really enjoying the writing style so far, I like seeing Gansey and Adam friends again. I don't know what's gonna happen with Blue, like that's Blue and Gansey is really putting me on tender hooks. I like that we're seeing more of 300 Fox Way. That's definitely my favorite part of the series. Like, I wish we could just have a book about the women of 300 Fox Way. I think that would be so fun to read about because I'm more interested in them than I am the main characters at this moment. But yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling like, okay, let's get going here. Like, reveal more to me about the main plot. Like, I want to know. I feel like we've been looking for Glendower for so long now. Like, I want more reveals. I really like the cave scene. I like when they're in caves water, but like, when they're in the real world or like the non- magic -y world it's a bit I'm just like let's get going like I just want to be back there so that's my only like qualm I guess with the book I haven't managed to crack the spine yet which is great I think it's really interesting I think the plot with Noah like the ghost part of that is really interesting and I'm looking forward to see what they ask Glendower if they find him because I'm doubtful at this point if they'll ever find him in this book series. I do like the writing style of course. I think it's much easier to read this time around. This is the outfit for today. This is like a jumpsuit? Is that what it's called? It's like a romper? Is that what it's called? I got this when I was like 14. I'm wearing two different earrings. And we have a clip, and this, and Miss Bangle Bracelet. Uh, and my bangs are doing interesting things. So that's the outfit. And I'm also wearing, I'm also wearing tights with this because it's cold. It'll probably put on a cardigan to be a bit more cozy. But I'm gonna go have breakfast.
got two more chapters but I just wanted to quickly note that there's this scene with the green mantle guy the gray man is there and he's like got green mantle's wife piper like captured and he's like holding a gun to her head basically and i'm just like why i just i hate it when like if you're gonna put a character in that situation like the gray man that you know like he's not worried about killing anyone like that's his whole job that's his whole thing why doesn't he kill them? That's I'm I'm not saying he should. I'm just saying he's an assassin. There's no purpose in him like thinking about it except for the plot. You know what I mean? Like unless he they you know what? I might be embarrassed if they go on to like show that he has like a whole scheme that he's planning in order to do something to the green mantle guy. But, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense, because I'm like, that's his whole thing, so why isn't he just killing them? I'm not saying he should, I'm just saying it doesn't make sense for his character. Step over the edge to cleaning my room right now. I am now on page 175 of Blue Lily Lily Blue. I don't have the book with me so you're just gonna get my explanation. Also yes that is a Chewbacca head back there. There's this scene where Noah and Gansey are talking and they have this like really cute heart to heart and at the same time there's this like like little toy that Noah found in Ronan's room I don't know why this bird decided to like yell about his personal troubles right when I started filming because he wasn't doing that a moment ago. I just thought it was really cool because I think the toy is like a metaphor because it's slowly like dissolving and I think it's a, it was a metaphor for both Noah's and Gansey's experiences because in this scene Noah's sort of talking about how he feels like he's becoming more dead and not as like corporeal cor corporeal and then Gansey is sort of talking about how when he finds Glendower he won't know who he is because he's always been searching for Glendower so he won't know who he is without that search but I just thought it was a really cool metaphor because you have this like toy that they keep looking at throughout the scene and he's slowly dissolving and slowly not becoming becoming like not the shape of a person and they're both talking about like I don't know I just thought that was really cool like Maggie Steve Otter's writing how she just plans things and the way she says things is really cool so I really liked that my friend's coming over soon and we're gonna head to an art market which is so exciting and I haven't seen her in like a month, so I'm really excited to see her. So I better get back to cleaning my room because she's gonna be here soon, and I don't want my room to be super messy for that. So I can like, I just want them to know. Are you really now? You know what you were. You no, read, I, what I are you currently reading? Yeah, but I want to give them what I just read, and then okay. I want to contrast it with what I'm reading. A now real booktuber. To... Yes. Hi everyone. <laughs> So ask me the question and then I'll answer it. So what are you currently <laughs> reading, Chioma? I am currently reading The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, which is the third book in the fifth season trilogy. And then I just recently read, you didn't even ask me this, I just <laughs> recently read the subtweet by 
Vivek Shreya. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, for a book club, and it's a really good book, would recommend. I actually was just about to put that one on my TBR, but oh, now that I know you liked we're the same it. Person. Yeah. What did you give the first two books in N.K. Jemison's trilogy? The fifth season, like the first book, I don't actually think I gave it any stars. <laughs> <laughs> but if I were to say it now, I would say I would give the first one like a 4.25. Wow. And then I would give the second one, like a second book, I would say 4.5 because it got a lot better. And the story, I love the characters. The main character is really strong, but also she's going through it. So relatable. <laughs> <laughs> then I haven't actually fully gotten into the next one, but it looks really good. So I'm excited. If but anyone... I would recommend that if you were to read this trilogy, <laughs> read it one after the other. <laughs> Don't read books in between these books because you will forget key information. So I have to look at like a, a full summary of the second book so I don't miss any, so I don't miss anything. So don't <laughs> read anything in between just so you fully immerse yourself in the world, if that makes sense. If anyone <laughs> thinks Chioma should start a booktube channel, comment down below. Persephone's dead. I am upset because she, I think she's my favorite character. I'm not feeling attached, super attached to the characters right now. It began Z the most, which is random, but true. I'm gonna go make a pie. I'm almost in the book. I have 90 pages left, and then I'll let you know my thoughts. So, I finished Blue Lily Lily Blue, and I'm very excited to tell you my thoughts on this book. To begin with, I give this book four stars. This is definitely my least favorite book in the Raven Cycle thus far. I saw someone else say this exact same thing in a review that I had been thinking, which is that I feel like more things happened in this book, but they weren't as important things as in the last book. I also feel like the ending was slightly anticlimactic, like when they're all in the like underground little tunnel-y area, I felt like, I don't know, it was, it, but see, that's what I'm saying, like, lots of stuff happened, I just wasn't excited about what was happening. I enjoyed this book, I feel like my favorite character was still Persephone, even though she died. I hope that they bring her back in the next book, because it's a fantasy novel, I'm like, ask Glendower for Persephone's life, that's who I want. I don't have too much more to say, the writing style, of course, is beautiful found this one a lot easier to read than the other ones have been. I don't know if I'm just like, I don't know, really into reading at the moment. I liked the, the plot, but I didn't feel like as much happened and it wasn't as engaging. But I still gave it four stars, which means I really liked it. So I'm hoping that the Raven King will be even better and stay tuned for that reading vlog because it should be coming soon because I'm planning to start it, I think tomorrow or the next day so yeah stay tuned for that i hope you enjoyed i hope you're having a wonderful day and i'll see you in my next video